All right, guys, we're going to get started on our project, our contact manager. And as I said, we're using Vue.js, which is a, a front end JavaScript framework. It's, a, it's actually my favorite front end JavaScript framework. And uh, we're going to keep this really simple. We'll basically just have uh, a couple fields, a name, an email, a phone number. We'll be able to add our contacts and read them and update, delete them and so on. So we'll make requests from the front end from Vue.js to our Laravel back end. All right, so we're going to set up Laravel just like we always do. So let's just say composer uh, create project Laravel slash Laravel. And we're going to just call this, uh, let's call it contact store. And we're going to go ahead and just add it to our vhost file, just like we've been doing. So Apache conf extra and let's go ahead and open this up v, uh, HTTP DV host and I'm just going to open up with notepad. All right. Uh, oh, this is a brand new one, actually. So I'm just going to grab whoops, I'm going to grab that. And let's see, we're going to uncomment these lines here and then we just want the server name and the document root in here so we can get rid of this stuff. All right. And then just take off the comments here. And then this is going to go to htdocs slash contact store slash public. All right. And then for the server name, let's just say contact store dot dev. All right. Actually, you know what? I'm also going to copy this and put this in here because if, if we don't do this, sometimes it can give us issues. So we're going to say HT docs and localhost. All right, so we'll save that and get out and then I'm going to open up notepad as an administrator so that we can edit the host file. If it lets me right click at some point, there we go. All right, now if you're on a Mac or Linux, just go in your ETC folder. On Windows, uh, you're going to want to go to uh, C Drive, Windows, System 32, Drivers, and ETC. All right, and then we're just going to view all files and click on Hosts. And let's go ahead and add 127.0.0.1, local host. And then same thing, 0.0.1. And then what do I call it? Contact store dot dev. Save that. And now we just need to restart Apache. OK, I'm using Xamp, so I'm going to open up the control panel here. And then we'll just stop it. And then we can just restart it. All right. Okay, that's still going. Let's go ahead and add our project to Adam. That was the wrong choice. I want to add project folder and then we're going to go to Xamp, htdocs and contact store. All right. Still going. All right, so that's done. So let's go ahead and CD into contact store and let's make sure that we can visit contact store uh, dot dev. All right. So since we're going to be working with view, we're going to be working with the public assets. So if we go to resources and we go to assets and then JS, this is where whoops, this is where view is stored. And if we look at the app JS, wow, that's small. What the heck? So if we look at this, we're including view and then there's a, a, an example component. OK, so we're going to create a separate component um, and work on that. All right. Now, in order to work with any of these assets and in order to compile them, 
we have to first run npm install because that's going to set up all the dependencies and all that stuff. All right, so let's go and say npm install and this this sometimes takes a couple minutes, uh, but we need to run that. All right. And then once that's done, whenever we edit anything in here in the assets and we need to recompile, we can either run npm run dev, which will just do it once and compile everything. Or we can do npm run watch and it'll constantly watch those files and then compile every time we save. Okay, so you don't have to keep typing that command in. Now, another thing we're going to be doing differently in this project is we're going to use SQL Lite, okay, which we haven't done yet. We've used MySQL, we've used uh, Postgres. So now we're going to use SQL Lite, which is a very, very light uh, file based database. Now, in order for this to work, we're going to go into the database folder and we're going to create a new file. And it's fine that we're doing this while npm install is still running. And we're going to create a file called database dot SQLite. OK, and that's going to be the default file that it looks at. So um, now what we need to do is go down to dot env where we usually put our credentials. And we're just going to change the right here DB connection. We're going to change it to SQLite, and then just delete the rest of these here. All right, because we don't need those. And let's save that. Actually, let's change the app name up here too. We'll change it to Contact Store. All right, and then we'll get rid of that. I mean, we'll close this. And then we need to go to our config and then database.php and where it says MySQL right here, we're going to just say SQL Lite. All right, and we'll save that. All right, so from here on out, we can still do our migrations and, and all that good stuff. So what I want to do is create a model. Okay, once this is done. All right, so we're going to create a model called contact. So we'll do PHP artisan. Let's say make model contact and we'll add dash M to create a mic. Uh oh, it didn't get the dash. All right, good. So that didn't did that run. Never actually done that before. OK, it didn't. All right, so let's run that again with dash M. So that created a configuration file, not a configuration file, a migration file. So we're going to go visit that database migrations and we want the create contacts table file. All right. And we're just going to add a couple fields here. So let's say table string name. And I'm going to copy that and we're going to do two more that this one's going to be email and then this one's going to be phone. All right, let's save that. And then let's see what we'll do is run that migration. So let's do PHP artisan migrate. And there we go. Now. Remember, we're using SQLite. So if we go over and we look at this database.sqlite file, you can see it has a, basically a bunch of gibberish in it. It's kind of hard to read, but it is holding the data. We can access it uh, through Eloquent like we could any other database. All right, so let's close that up. All right, and then all we have left to do on the back end is to create our routes because we're going to be using, if we look in the routes folder, we're going to use this API file here. All right. We just want to be able to accept the requests that are coming from Vue.js. So that's what we'll get into next.